Hello viewers, Super Ohms here. It was brought to my attention across our various Forza Motorsport reviews that multiplayer is touted as the best feature of the game. Given our somewhat critical take on the many career mode shortfalls of this title, people suggested it might be fair if I instead enjoyed the new multiplayer mode. So today, we're doing just that. In fact, these races were revelatory of even more interesting things about Forza Motorsport, if not outright terrifying, for reasons we shall delve into shortly. There were highs, there were lows, and there was extreme bewilderment. We'll be doing the three mandatory qualifier races which form the introduction of the Forza Motorsport online experience. And to really get into the spirit, I'm packing my full Fanatec sim rig for this rather than the gamepad, which, as you're about to see, was perhaps not the wisest thing I've ever done. But we begin with the Honda Civic here at the iconic Grand Valley Racetrack. Everybody's favorite track in the world, absolutely no doubt. So. We're coming into the final of three qualifying laps, practice ending in just over a minute, so this is very much going to be our last attempts. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice, other than my complete lack of ability to drive this track, is that I've somehow fluked my way onto the top of the leaderboard. Now, we're holding down pole position. The second thing you'll notice right here is what I'm doing to these poor front tires. So every single time I go through one of these high sustain speed corners, I'm just scrubbing the living crap out of them. Un unbeknownst to myself at this point, I, I'm just so fixated on my very first race, my very first qualifying laps, that I'm not realizing that I'm overdriving this car, at the very least that the default setup is extremely understeer heavy, so I'm trying to kind of scrub my way out of this, which is not ever the, uh, the most elegant solution to doing these things. So, as we finalize our third and final qualifying lap, it's looking fairly safe and secure that we may take pole position here with a, yep, 57-3-6-7. Just narrowly beating out Mr. It's Choco, 1625. Absolutely legendary stuff there. Now we move on to the medium compound for the actual race and put in just enough for two extra laps. Starting on the grid. Now the one thing that you've heard me say in the past is that the proximity arrows are not much great help and neither is the uh, look right it would appear so I have no idea where second is in relation to me so I'm leaving space for someone not knowing whether they're actually there or not but luckily for me the battle begins very very early right behind me so all I need to do is scoot on ahead let them take each other out and hope for the very best here as I begin the scrubbing work very early oh yes Nice and toasty front tires. This is how you warm them up like a champ. Look, we can see the battle takes an ill turn behind us. Guy going off the track, rejoining in third position. We now have Mr. XX Gear 114XX in second position bearing down on us. Now, luckily, I am increasing the, the time gap between us. So I feel reasonably confident. I'm going to get into the groove of driving this. I feel like perhaps, just perhaps, there may not be as much to worry about as I initially thought. As we start to establish, again, a bit of an increased time gap to Mr. XX Gear 114XX. Certainly not uh, a legacy Xbox account he created as a teenager in the early 2000s. Yes, those torturous tyres, the absolute calling card of a, a master driver here as we scoot on ahead to lap 4 out of 8. So we're midway through the race and this is where things start taking a turn for the ill for me. You can see by the time gap, Mr. XX Gear 114XX is rapidly closing on the Delta. So I'm perplexed at this point. I actually don't know what's going on. I've, I'm not privy to what I've been doing. I don't understand how we can suddenly be this much quicker. But what I didn't realize is looking down in the bottom right that I've completely eroded my medium fronts by basically overdriving the front axle of the car. So I'm thinking to myself at this point, okay, it's probably only a matter of time until Mr. XX Gear 114XX overtakes me. There's nothing I can do to stop this closure rate. So at the very least, what I can do is learn what I'm missing out on. What is it, what is it that's happening here on the fifth of eight laps as he gets very, very close to making his move? Now, I'm not going to be very obstructive here. This is just a qualifying lap. The idea is to get ranked. You're supposed to get your safety ranking, your skill ranking. So I just want to take it nice and easy. Minimum collisions. As, I, as you can tell, I'm just struggling to drive this car. The fronts have been completely worn out. It's 
sheer understeer hell right now, just torturing the tires on every turn. So Mr. Gear 114 getting ready to make his move now, no doubt. As he takes me very easily on the inside, showing me once again that he has so much more grip on his tires than I do. So I'm wondering, okay, what is it that I can learn here on this first turn? And it would appear to be that the cardinal sin that I'm, I'm making is that I'm not drifting the corners. So in fact, I should, be, I should be busting the rear end of the car out and power oversteering through the turns, it appears. That is the superior tire strategy in Forza Motorsport. Uh, also using a controller, it would appear. So th there is my first indicator of uh, certain mistakes that I've made here in Forza Motorsport. The first was actually using a uh, multi-thousand dollar sim rig to drive when I could have used a vastly superior gamepad to utilize more of the car's grip and in fact utilize more of all four tires grip by uh, busting out the rear end and then skidding out the the rear tires so that's that's a lesson well learned as we jump to the the final of eight laps as I'm completely struggling I'm just in in understeer limbo right now so all I want to do is finish on the podium I want to make sure that third Mr. Smoke OG doesn't overtake me so he's five seconds behind but closing rapidly as you can tell the, those tires just being absolutely tortured around that corner so I'm just taking it nice and easy hoping to finish the race on the podium as Mr. XX Gear 114XX absolutely smokes me with a five second gap which is remarkable truly as we cross the finish line to end our very first multiplayer race here at Forza Motorsport some lessons well learnt and the boys at the Honda factory, no doubt, absolutely thrilled with that finish. As we move on to the iconic Hakone circuit, everybody's favorite, no doubt. About as iconic as my inability to drive it. So Hakone is a track that I've turned possibly about six laps on in my entire life. So this is very interesting as I've done an absolutely professional job at timing my qualifying session here. As you can see, it ends in uh, just under 40 seconds. And the lap here at Hakone is just over one minute so with this mathematical impossibility staring down i get cut off halfway through my lap perhaps expectedly now i start fifth on the grid squarely in the midfield for what is going to be without a doubt the most exciting race you have ever seen here at forza motorsports stay tuned because this is an absolutely wild one as we blast off the finish starts straight now this is perhaps my worst nightmare in Forza Motorsport multiplayer. I am here in internal view. The proximity arrows are perhaps a little wanting and I'm kind of unable to tell how close I am in proximity to the cars around me. So I don't know how close I can drive. I don't know how much I can push it on the outside. And I'm not really sure where I can make my moves as I get my first collision just bumping the, the rear quarter panel of my car uh, against a car that I, I wasn't sure that was quite there. And one more time. So I'm feeling a little bit guilty here. I definitely don't want to be doing high contact. The game apparently agreeing with this, not penalizing me for those uh, rubbing his racing love taps. And see things getting absolutely hectic up there as I just do an absolutely disgraceful maneuver there. I am so, so apologetic to Mr. DSM ZR1. I probably should have let him through here, but he's going to undercut me right here anyway, so it's not much of a bother. We don't want to cede too much time and positions to the guys behind us, because the guys up front are definitely leading their own battle, so with any luck, they may drop behind. We can see what happens, but I'm still deeply terrified at this point. It's my second race lap of Hakone. I, I can, at least I can see the guys right next to me. I don't have much room to maneuver, but I mean, this is basically my worst nightmare. I don't know how hard I can push the car. I don't know what sort of lines I can use. I don't know when I'm going to make contact and I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be one of the ubiquitous Forza Motorsport shameful rammers. That said, it's been an absolutely thrilling neck and neck race here. Not something I expected at all. I just imagined with my pathetic qualifying lap, I would just kind of fall away somewhere in the midfield and be spared these kinds of shenanigans as unfortunately Forza Motorsport's OP Draft just kind of puts me in the lead, almost puts me in the lead there again. But the mighty understeer coming to the rescue of both of us, it seems. Neck and neck with Mr. Mr. Arcane Phobia now coming up on my inside. I guess he's very well situated. Probably not a big fan of high fantasy. Luckily, 
No such shenanigans here at Forza Motorsport as we cross the start line for the third time in the race. So now, <laughs> that, well, I, I would say this is almost an arcane draft. It's almost an arcane level slipstream. Just an absolute horsepower booster there in the touring cars as I just take the inside kind of unceremoniously from Mr. DSM ZR1 because I, I really don't want this fight, believe it or not, as much as it might seem like it's neck and neck and I can't even jump ahead. I can't even jump past any of this race because it's just action-packed, absolutely thrilling. I mean, don't you, don't you wish that F1 was half this exciting? I mean, no push to pass. Heck, the draft is essentially a push to pass here as I break way too early yet again because I just don't have my markers set up for this track. At the very least, I'm kind of learning about the, the runoff on this track a little bit more as I get undercut by Mr. DSM ZR1. Very nice move there. I thought he may have outbraked himself, but no, just perfectly timed as I get right behind him in time to catch the arcane slipstream yet again. Perhaps learn some lines, but of course, this overpowered slipstream once again puts me in the lead. So we have this neck and neck race that I so desperately don't actually want to be in but I can't see this position because I have arcane phobia right behind me looking to take my rightfully earned fifth position which he does with ease on the inside now I'm more than happy to cede this battle to DSM ZR1 and arcane phobia this is not something I want any part of but unfortunately this darn slipstream just kind of putting me back in contention so we go three wide into what is fortunately a massive racetrack, breaking reasonably late by my standards there and somehow slotting in ahead of both of them. So, <sighs> the battle is still very much on. <laughs> we get some jinking around the outside. Now I'm praying, at the very least, let me hold this position. As second and third in their battle are falling back, they seem to have not adhered to the ideal Forza Motorsport tire stratagem. I may actually have a chance at a podium spot. Not that I'm thinking about such things. Right now, I would be happy to just get a lead from Mr. DSM ZR1, which I fortunately do as we skip ahead a lap or two. I'm now very rapidly making up ground to Mr. Victor Pacelli. Now we're on the second last lap of the race. Just behind, I want to say Pope Swings. Papo Swings. I need a microscope to read that, but whatever the case, we get to the start, finish straight one more time in a really good position. That magical slipstream is probably going to do us all manner of wonders here. We cross, and now we have the final lap of what is easily the single most eventful race I've ever had here at Forza Motorsport 8. Or well, Forza Motorsport, I guess they're, they're rejecting the numbers now. Now, unfortunately... Mr. Victor Pacelli does lose the car a little bit, but I lose it even more. The perpetual understeer, always my enemy. But I gain yet another car level. The guys at the Honda factory absolutely thrilled with that, being able to give me maybe a rear suspension if I'm lucky, maybe a, a wing upgrade. Now that the levels decree, it can be done. Breaking again for this very, very iconic corner as they both understeer out completely. Mr. Papo swings absolutely broadsiding me there not that I can tell uh, my kingdom for a radar yet again as we I think we go three wide into the penultimate corner now I commit I, I I believe in the proximity arrow I believe that I have the space I take the space and somehow I've emerged in second after that absolute mess of a race as we cross the finish line for one last time the guys at the Honda factory absolutely thrilled because well, we're all Hondas, really, but what a what a great finish and best lap of the race. Now, for the final race of the three, I get my one of my favorite racetracks of all time is the mighty Laguna Seca. We're here on the second last of three qualifying laps, right behind Mr. Wedged Puma. Now, luckily, I didn't realize this when I was closing. I thought he would be obstructing me, but it turns out he turns into a glorified ghost car as soon as I get close enough to him. So little did I know that that's going to happen in front of me again. I weave to dodge, but uh, I think the same thing happened with that guy. So not much to worry about. As we take pole position by country mile, a 108.1. So we start on the inside here, the shortened version of Laguna Seca, which 
only ever really driven in Forza Motorsport. I, I didn't even realize that this was a legitimate layout of Laguna Seca until I drove in this game for the first time. Now, luckily, getting a really good start, managing to take the outside this time, not worrying about who's next to me, not worried about the whole spatial awareness thing, getting a great lead out of T1 there. They're already battling for second and third. So we have a lead of just over half a second, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So amazing run through here. Now, I don't use the outside curb for the braking zone there. It falls through a bit, a bit spotty with its curbs. Sometimes you get the old curb of death curb glue if you really load the tires on the outside. So I'm trying to avoid this as much as possible, driving as conservatively as I can for my first lap. Of course, flying over the, uh, the anti-cut there. Almost completed our very first lap and we've already got a lead coming up on three seconds. So I'm not worried of all the three tracks that we've raced so far. This is the only track that I actually feel remote comfort with. So I'm feeling okay with this. I'm feeling pretty good. Car is set up reasonably well. I've given it a, a touch, just a hair more oversteer from what I've learned from my last two races and a bit more, I think possibly a little bit more, more aero as well. As we jump ahead to the last lap here at Laguna Seca, a very uneventful race here from the front. Managed to establish a lead of about six seconds from the Aquatic Panda. Just keep it nice and consistent. That was basically the name of the game here at Laguna Seca. Just no need to overdrive, no need to scrub up the tires. I did, I did okay on the tire usage. Probably not as my, my controller-wielding, drifting brethren. I, I've yet to learn the, uh, the skills of the masters, but for one of our... Um, for a sim racing wheel pleb, I've done okay. I've minimized my front wheel scrubbing as I'm about to cross the finish line for the very last time for my very first win in Forza Motorsport Multiplayer. So I sincerely hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think about my tire strategy, um, what, what I left on the table by not drifting everywhere with a gamepad. Shall I do my next set of races from Chase Cam with a gamepad? Is that perhaps the, the superior strategy here? Let me know down below and I'll catch you in the next one.